Can you hear me? <laughs> it's not every day you get to talk to one of the best managers in the world. I'm not a pope of football and tell people how to play. You have to find a way for your team. That's the that's manager's job. When he talks, you listen. <laughs> <laughs> like a second later, you were late. Nice. Players came in and I'm still 55. Is it? Ah. So in that nobody would argue with him. And I think he actually enjoyed that. Well done for an amateur. Jurgen Klopp is a football genius. Jürgen, um, lovely to meet you. I want to start with warm-ups, okay? Um, and I'm going to let you in on a little secret here, all right? Any time I've played against you, against Liverpool, um, all I can remember is the warm-up happening and you standing there on the halfway line, hands behind your backs, just watching, just observing everything. Yeah. First of all, why do you do that? And secondly, are you aware just how much that gets in our heads? Uh, that's not the reason. To be honest, no. Um, I think I did it my whole career. So, if you want, my job is more or less done before the game. There's no when they come together in the dressing room again. You say a few things, but I know my players, um, and from time to time I've looked there as well. But um, I just want to see. I want to understand. Sometimes you see a player limping a little bit. You ah. see a player doing this or that, and you try to to to. I, I just try to understand what they are doing when they do. Not so interesting, obviously, when they do the pure physical stuff, but yeah. when they start passing and these kind of things, I have a look. The How technical stuff. Yeah, yeah, I, I just look at that. And only one time, to be one of us, I used it to intimidate a little bit the opponent. It's not nice to say that, but it was um, against my old club. When we played Dortmund and the, we played 1-1 one -one there, and before the game, I knew that would be strange for them. <laughs> so and I thought, ah, come on, let's do it a little bit. But um, besides that, I heard that somebody said that I do that on purpose. It's not true. I just, I just watch it. But you tell me now. I, I can guarantee you. I know. What it, so so I'm, I'm doing my warm up, and I'm thinking if I let a goal in, if the goalie coach scores past me in the right corner or the left corner, I'm thinking, I hope, I hope Jurgen hasn't seen that. I hope he doesn't go in the changing room and go, lads, he's, he's weak down to his right hand side. Honestly, that's the kind of thoughts that get in our heads. So <laughs> I promise you, it intimidates not only me, but so many more people. I guarantee you it, okay? So everybody should do it then? Everybody should do it. Well, you just keep doing it anyway. <laughs> so eight years you've been here now. Back in the day, the likes of a Stoke City, for example, a big bruising team. Is there now less of them sort of teams and more of the teams that want to play open, expansive football? Yeah, they are. But, but it's not always leads to success. I, I, I think Southampton last year did mm. a lot of good things and in the end they got relegated. I'm not sure exactly what is right then, to be honest, yeah. but um, I really liked what I saw when, I, when you watched them, but the results were not right. I'm not a pope of football and tell people how to play. Um, it's that you have to find a way for your team. That's, that's the manager's job, that you have a specific quality available and with the way you play that has to fit to the players. And, Probably, if it's the right thing, it will improve the players as well. It's always about what can you do. That's the way we started here um, at Liverpool with high intense, high press football. And I want to keep that in the game, but the more possession you have, the lesser you are in these situations. Mm. And uh, the more difficult it is to, to keep the mindset really for it. Mm -hmm. The better players you have, then they are more creative, yeah. are not used to working quite yeah, so. Yeah, exactly in that way. So, um, but um, it's, it's still all right. So I, you have, I had to adapt a lot as well to, to the quality, the new quality we brought in in, in, the, in the recent years and this year again. So there is no perfect way of playing football. There's just the right way for a specific team. And then if you have philosophy, you bring the players for the philosophy. If you don't have one, you, you create a philosophy based on the quality of the players. A bit of goalkeeper love here. For me, the best goalkeeper in the world at this moment in time. Um, as well. how, how reassuring, how nice is it to know that you've got a guy like that standing between the sticks, knowing that the fans absolutely love it, adore him, and then the players in turn just look back and think, it's cool, we got Alisson. The craziest thing about Ali is that I would really say, and I think as well he's the best goal in the world, um, as a person he's even better. And that's so, that's so crazy. Yeah. That I, when, when you see it, him, you look at him and think, oh, no, I don't want to have another goalkeeper anymore. That, that's it just now. That's the goalie you want to have. And he's calm as you like. He's really um, smart, a really good person, but wants to play each game. If you, if you leave him out for whatever reason, you know why? So like, he has this competitiveness as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Um, he has a, a real football brain, so he thinks about things. When you talk to him about different situations, I have no clue about goalkeeping, really. But he, and he explains it to me. Oh, yeah, 
Yeah. <laughs> Gutted? Ah, yeah. that boy, you could I, have I done think, like this. I think that's the part that sets him ahead of everybody else is, is a word in England called nous. Okay. It's 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 kind of just smelling it, oh, yeah, okay. sensing it, yeah, seeing absolutely. and reading body language. How often he catch a ball where everybody has to jump yeah. and it just takes it like that. And that looks so, not at all spectacular, which is then obviously people don't realize how big a save it was. Yeah. But that's his biggest skill. And that was, um, but when we, when we were, when we analyzed him or when we wanted to bring him in and you watched his game, it, it's ridiculous how calm he is, yeah. how calm he is. And that's still like that. So I can imagine, um, I understand that um, you see it like that because I see it exactly the same way. He's, he's absolutely exceptional. Go to the other end of the pitch, Darwin Nunes. I did an interview actually with James Milner. It was about six months ago. I said, which player in that Liverpool squad do you, do you get most excited by? He has got the most raw talent. And he said, without a doubt, it's Darwin Nunes. Yeah. He says, it's just like we're waiting for something to click. But when it clicks, wow, he's going to be a beast. Yeah, Millie didn't play together with um, Tom Sobersly and, and Ryan Gravenberg. Yeah. She knows all the others. But they have a lot of talent as well. So where you, but they can still make the next step. But he's right, Darwin is, is like that. The big difference between Darwin now and Darwin last year is obviously that he's completely settled. Play as a person. So, and, oh yes, the weekend is a very good example again. So one chance he could have done better, the other chance he's doing everything right and then it's about an inch crossbar. Yeah, yeah. Trent's ball, crossbar, back of Leno in, his ball, crossbar out. out so that's, yeah. where's the difference really? Um, but he has all these moments and his understanding and involvement in our third goal, header to more, more pass to, that's, these things are so important. He stays in the games, he's super positive in and around the game. Um, he was a bit, like aggressive in a little bit the wrong way in the beginning when things don't go well. Yeah, you have yeah, this and he's completely yeah. relaxed in his moment. Now he is aggressive, but in the right way. So yes, we um, we are. Com I'm really, really happy with what I see in the moment, and the rest will come. So we are completely calm. That's um, that's how it is. Could he have scored more goals? Yes, of course. Could he have more situations? I don't think so. So that he has all the moments, and now we have to work on the last last touch. In the summer, you lost a couple influential players, Jordan Henderson, James yeah. Milner. Um, Fabinho, Femino. Fabinho, exactly, leaders, like real Oxley, experience. Oxley, so I'm now just uh, giving an interview, it's called obviously a screamer um, in Turkey. Um, yeah, they're all nabby. Just how important are these players off the pitch? Because I've, I've been in England squads with Jordan Henderson, James Milner. They're the guys that really set the standards, don't they? Yeah. They they don't let anybody slip, even if it's a Sunday training. Everybody knows Sunday training can be, it's hard work sometimes. But they're still the guys pushing everybody, making sure everybody sticks to that high level. No, that, 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 that's how you, how you lead a team. So, look, the manager, I, I'm not in the dressing room. A lot of things happen in the dressing room which I don't get, but I'm not aware of. So um, little things. If somebody's a minute late, it's not that the security guard calls me and tells you yeah, a minute late. So they sort it themselves. But you, Millie had a specific rule. Like it's it's 9:55, for example, and when the watch turns to 9:55, you were late already. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> like a second later, you were late. Nice. Players came in and I'm still 55. Is it? Nah. So and that nobody would argue with him. Who who uh, who's taken over that mantle in the Liverpool squad now? Oh, we had only yesterday a meeting with our leadership group, and they do extremely well. I had to rate them. I had to <laughs> rate how them. they're doing. What, about, how good a yeah, job well, they're doing? Yeah, yeah, from one to ten. I had to rate them yesterday, and um, I gave them an eight. <laughs> not bad then. No, that's not bad, really, uh, because everybody stepped up. So it's obviously virtual. Trent, yeah. Ali, um, Robo, and more. Um, Outstanding personalities, outstanding characters, um, really smart people, understanding the the, the bigger picture, mm. and um, it's a joy. It's a joy to watch. I mean, they, they had real, they could really look up, and 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 Millie and Hendo took a lot away. Yeah. So it's like, as much as I was not aware of a lot of things, they were not aware of a lot of things. Which just Millie and Hendo just did it. So that's how it is. And um, so now I have to do it, but I'm pretty sure they enjoy it. And anyway, anyway, you know, when it's going well, footballing wise, then it's nicer to do it, all the, all the other stuff, like of course, yeah. being, I think Robbo is probably most experienced. Now Scotland is a really good, uh, a really good moment, but when Scotland were not in a good moment, you know, the captain and they pick you, and you have to give an interview and you have to explain a 3-0 defeat, that's not so cool. It's tough, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so far it all goes well and um, I'm really happy and it, it's always like that. We had a super successful team. I know we didn't win everything, but we were close enough to, to call it success. Not be winning the, champ uh, um, the, the league for one point twice, what does that say about you? 
if you look back, this was still an incredible, consistent team on an extremely high level. Losing two Champions League fans, yes, it's not great, but qualifying for a three is a pretty big achievement. So that was with this group and we had to change. Um, and that's the only question, when is the right moment to change and, and all these kind of things. Um, I think we, we did in the right moment. Um, and so far it works out pretty well and um, we create other real leaders. Jürgen, your management style, um, I love watching it, I won't lie to you. You're, you're very sort of tactile, very hands-on, like, like a father figure, you really are. Um, is, that, is that how you feel you get the best out of your players? Because I think nowadays, I, I think football has changed a little bit, where you need to be a little bit more sort of personable. Before I had any idea what will bring the best out of my players, I was like this. So I, I, when I start, yeah, I want to feel comfortable. I want to feel good around the place, stuff like this. I, I, I like it like this. And, and I'm, I'm in the moment when I go on the pitch. Either way, I have to build them up because we lost the game and stuff like this. Or I'm so happy and so proud and I'm, I enjoy it just so much to, to see them, the faces and all these kind of things. That's why I go there. That's my my part. Because usually you win the game and the, 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 the overriding feeling is... Relief. Yeah. But when you see them, that's the, the things I enjoy the most. And if uh, somebody scored a goal or, or had an assist or played just a great game and, and all these little moments, that was never planned. Um, that's just how me. it is. If somebody would tell me that's not allowed anymore, that's the moment I have to stop, probably. <laughs> yeah. Jurgen, thank you so much. It's an absolute pleasure to meet Welcome. you. Welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Well done for an amateur. <laughs> yeah. It's just talking, no, it's yeah, nice, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's yeah, nice. Yeah. Jurgen Klopp, top man, top manager, and you can watch him and his Liverpool team and all the other Premier League matches on Boxing Day, the 27th and the 28th of December, only on Prime Video. <laughs>